I always hated when coaches are like, you know, I'm really expecting you to step up and be a leader. That, that's what I'm getting oh, at. Oh, dude, like, it, it, like, like the amount of times I've run into, you know, different kids that are like, you know, the coach is really expecting me to step up to be a leader. And I can never think of a single moment where a coach in all the years I played was like, we need you to be a better leader out there. But they they don't <sighs> give them the tools, the steps or the, opp- well, like they give them the opportunity, I guess. But well, I mean, uh, um, you know, there's a reason I coined the phrase, geez, it was, uh, I think it was my third or fourth year in Philadelphia. You know, in the absence of true leadership, false prophets appear. Uh, you know, what I realized pretty early on is that, uh, um, at least in football, leadership comes from being a good player and doing all the little things and being the example. It's not the guy who's standing up fucking giving, you know, motivational rah-rah speeches and, you know, trying to kick the door off of the hinges. For me, that was always kind of disingenuous because when shit got tough, those are the guys that seem to be like, disappearing in the back like uh Waterboy. you know yeah you know mr coach klein in uh <laughs> you know and we used to see that all the time you know the dude that's given you know wants to like pull everybody together and like you know hype everybody up all of a sudden when we're down by you know two touchdowns is like hiding in the background behind the water coolers and i'm like dude like the leader is the guy that regardless of what's going on is still trying to go out there and take scalps well that will conclude this episode of uh of uh, the leader, the leadership podcast. That was, that was good stuff. That that's essentially, I agree with both of you wholeheartedly. Um, one is coaches are not giving their kids tools. They're not equipping them. They're not developing more leaders. They're spending most of their time just trying to get compliant followers. And yes, we, yes, we want people to do what we say as a leader. Yeah. Obviously you have to lead, you have to do what you're supposed to do. But as leaders, we spend way too much time trying to get Tex and John to just, you know, do what I tell you to do, as opposed to giving them the tools to step up and be better leaders or to do things on their own without coach asking them or without a captain telling them. So I don't think, number one, we as leaders equip and develop other leaders. But like John said, uh, I agree wholeheartedly. I think our idea of leadership uh, is, is, is wrong in this country, to be honest. I think we put way too much stock on your position, your title, what kind of status you have. But we also, when it looks in verbal leadership, or we look at this person, that's the rah, rah, you know, Braveheart, you know, I know that's older movie, but you know, the, the still hero, a classic. Melt, still a yeah. classic. I mean, you got the hero up on a horse and he's giving this speech and then thousands of people follow him into battle. Or you got the Tim Tebow's or, you know, these kind of people that we see. Yeah, but in Braveheart, he gave that speech and then he was the first one into the fight. Which off a great point. And that you often know? gets forgotten. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but we've all been around, you know, we've all played sports. We've all been around that yahoo. That's like, come on, guys, we got to play. We got to we got to work oh, okay. harder. And it's like, dude, you're not touching the lines and you're almost last in sprints. Yeah. You know, w- come on, just simmer down a little bit. I, I had a negative connotation with the word coach for a long, long time. And when people would call me coach, I'd always be like, hey, you can call me John. But uh, coach is usually a dude who's standing out there in shorts with a whistle while I'm fucking busting my ass. So, you know, watching me fucking bust my ass just because we would go to training camp and we would play and like the coaches are out there fucking screaming, blowing whistles and whatever. And they're out there sweating. I mean, I give them that, but I'm like, dude, you guys are just standing there. Uh, you know, like, believe me, I, I appreciate all of this, but like for me, coach was like the dude who's standing there, you know, or, or, uh, you know, Andy Reed talking about somebody like you need to be in better shape because he's over there with a, you know, <laughs> fucking A1C of 10 and a, you know, 400, uh, blood sugar count. I mean, like to me, it's um, and not that he needs to be in shape, but it's like, uh, like I always appreciated playing for coaches and playing for people that had done the job and spoke to me as a professional. And I think like that was something that you know, like, hey, you don't have to fucking chew my ass. I'm harder on myself than anybody else. But if you're not providing me the, the direction and and providing me the tools for my for greater success, then you're effectively just uh, a screaming coach. And we used to call guys, this guy's just a fucking screamer. He doesn't know what he's doing. Well, hundred percent, you know, leadership, most of us as leaders, we, we paint by numbers. We color by numbers. We, we do a template. We're going to treat Tex and John the same way. We're going to treat every team. You know, this worked last year with our team, or we're going to do the same thing with all the guys or all the gals on our team. And, and that's not true leadership. That's just to me, managing, uh, that's just being a manager or just doing some, you know, some kind of a template, Real leadership is diving in and saying, hey, what does Tex need? What does Tex want? How can I get Tex from where he is to where he needs to be in the same way with John? And you're doing that with all your athletes. And, and certainly 
there's there's certain nuances and certain dynamics at the different levels. So high school, college, pro, there's going to be some dynamics a little bit that are different. But at the end of the day, even at the pro level, uh, and, and, you, and you guys know this, but even at the pro level, there's feelings, there's emotion, there's agendas, there's fears, there's things involved with those people because they're still humans. Now their bank accounts bigger and they're a better athlete than the college and high school guys, but still there there's, there's ways that you can lead them. And that's why some of the best coaches you've seen uh, take, for instance, basketball, some of the best coaches have been guys that have been able to connect with their athletes, uh, a Phil Jackson going back way in the day, Chuck Daly with the Detroit Pistons and the dream team. Uh, Greg Popovich, even Steve Kerr, guys who that locker room kind of believes in that coach, that that coach knows those players and is not just, I'm going to paint by numbers. I'm just going to scream because that's what my coach did. Or I'm, you know, Greg Popovich, I mean, he wasn't afraid to dog cuss you out, but you also, there was, you know, he was going to have tough conversations. He was going to have quote unquote tough love, but he was also going to have a strong bond and a strong connection. Most of those guys knew that, all right, Coach Popovich, he's got my best interest. He's trying to get the best out of me. And maybe he's not going to coach everybody the same or lead everybody the same. And, and I don't think that you can do that. But I think the best leaders are those people that are, are figuring out what makes each person tick and what each person needs. So I, I agree with you, John. I don't think the screaming – I think there's some people that need screaming. I don't think that most people need screaming. I think most people need, hey, help me go to where I need to go. Help me get to where I need to get. And I, I don't feel need like you. As you go up the rung, the the screaming lessens. Um, and I saw that, like, uh, you know, uh, my high school coaches, like, they didn't coach us to do anything. All they did was fucking scream at us. And half the time, I didn't even know what they were screaming about. And, uh, like, that was, like, I always joke that uh, I succeeded in football in spite of my high school football coaches. Like, uh, if I had actually listened to them and, like, you know, like, uh, plugged into what they were saying, I probably would have never got to college. And when I got to college, I played for uh, a guy named Tom Cable, who's, you know, was head coach of uh, Seattle and, uh, you know, really, really o talented. Oakland and then a yeah. assistant coach so of Seattle. Seattle. Yeah, and he was real talented, but uh, he was younger. He was like 28, 29 years old at the time and was still pissed off that he wasn't playing football. So, like, a lot of his anger was because of his own shortcoming. And it's funny, as a kid, you don't realize this, but now as an adult, I look back and I'm like, I think that dude was just upset with who he was. And, he was and fiery. Yeah, and channeled it out <laughs> on us. And then you get to the NFL, and all of a sudden you're having a coach where you realize you're like, hey, man, um, at the end of the day, I could do this job better than you because I understand the nuance better because I actually played this job for a long time. And um, you know, working with offensive line coaches and different pl pl uh, coaches that played at the highest level, those are the dudes that you really plug into and you, you start understanding because they can talk to you on like a very personal level. Hey, like when this is happening, this is what you need to do. This is how you need to improve to become a better player opposed from somebody that's just like, you know, and I think I, I love your point about being able to assess each individual athlete. Like if I worked with a bunch of young athletes, every one of them would have a slightly different prescription. And, uh, but then, but that also takes time and nuance and understanding all the, you know, all the small pieces which is just uh, applying yourself to the craft, just uh, fucking screaming. Back, I'm a loaded freight train, and I'm right on track. I'm